Hello and welcome to The Big Five. This has been a week when we have seen all sorts of political pressure on the government for foreign policy reasons. There's been certain talk about what should be done with Italy and then of course the DNK pulled out on the question of what should be done with Sri Lanka and a little earlier we saw questions as to what should be happening with Bangladesh. The TMC had its own view on the Tisa uh, water sharing. It's not entirely new. We will remember of course UPA1 came under a lot of pressure because of ties with the United States but I guess the broader question that we have to ask ourselves, and that's what we're going to do on the program today, setting aside one crisis or the second crisis, overall, is Indian foreign policy now something that is very much subject to domestic politics? And if that is the case, what are the long-term implications? That's the broader subject that we're going, uh, going to be discussing. And I'd like to welcome all our guests out here, starting with uh, Mr. Kamal Sibal, who's a former foreign secretary, Madhu Yakshi, a Lok Sabha MP from the Congress Party. Thank you, uh, sir, for being with us. Mr. Sagata Roy, Lok Sabha MP from the Trinamool Congress, uh, who, which has now, of course, said it is going to, it believes that, uh, that uh, a, a state party like the TMC should always back the center in foreign policy. Uh, it's, a, it's a view that... I, Generally, okay, okay. Generally, being sensitive to the state's concerns. Fine, I, mean, I, I guess the DMK could say we are doing the same. But Mr. Ronan Sen, former Indian ambassador to the United States, who will, of course, remember UPA 1 and what was happening with the nuclear deal in, in, in excruciating detail, no doubt. Headless chickens. Headless chickens as well. He wasn't going to repeat that comment, but you repeated it for him, so thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Dushyan Dave, it's great to have you with us, uh, senior advocate of the Supreme Court. It gives us great pleasure to welcome onto the program uh, Francesca Marino, who's a journalist and author. Of, uh, she's, she's from Italy and will tell, give us a sense of what Italy is making of the entire uh, drama that is taking place out here. It also gives me very great pleasure to welcome, joining us from Colombo, Honorable Sujiva Arjuna Sena Singhe, who's a member of parliament uh, representing Colombo in, the, in the, the Sri Lankan parliament. Thank you, sir, so much for joining us. But before I come to any of you, I just want to go across to one of the, the senior statesmen, if, I, if you like, of the country, a person who's been the external affairs minister of India, and, and Mr. Jaswan Singh, who's joining us. And sir, I'm going to really ask you, uh, in that capacity as a senior statesman, um, what do you make of this trend that we now seem to be seeing, that foreign policy could be held hostage to domestic politics? And is this something which you think is going to increase? Uh, the problem arises when uh, two things come together. One is an absence of policy over which sits uh, an absence of government. We don't have a government now and therefore naturally there is no policy. And if the government's governance is absent, and policy is also absent, then the natural federalism of India will assert itself and the regions will assert uh, their, uh, what they conceive to be their regional interests. It's really like, uh, rather like uh, we are reliving the days of uh, later Mughals. I am I'm very sorry to see this situation because uh, a combination of no policy, no government, no implementation uh, is uh, making India lose uh, so much prestige in international affairs as also make compromises with this national interest. So they this used is, I think the principle we have. Yeah. So there used to be a time in there used to be a time in the past when all political parties would set aside their differences when it came to foreign policy. We all remember what Atal Bihari Vajpayee, for example, said at the time of the 1971 uh, war, and there were numerous other occasions. Um, is this something new that we are seeing right now, uh, or at the end of the day, is because for, because uh, you know as India becomes more and more of a confident country uh, nation, is it only to be expected that politics will come into foreign policy? But not necessarily. If, if, the, if the government is inspired by thought and direction, then what you term as opposition parties will also, because after all, also fall in line. After all, what, uh, what governs the determination of foreign policy is uh, national interest. But you can't have a policy if you don't have a government. 
And then naturally, regional uh, assertions come to the fore. Okay. And you do think, sir, that this entire trend is something that is weakening India's image abroad? But of course it is. I said so. The prestige that India merits, which I think has been India's, uh, from uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru's days, we are losing it if we haven't lost it altogether, because even domestically, uh, the government has no standing. And even if you go to the extent of uh, working on the thesis that foreign policy is only an extension of domestic policy, but then there has to be an articulatable domestic policy, a, governant, a government that leads, that inspires. But instead of inspiring, if a government fills us with despair, okay. then you won't have a policy. All right, sir. Thank you so much for joining us with that perspective. It's always, always great to hear from you. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for, be, for being with us.